Hare Krishna, spur of the moment recording. It's me, Sun Man Patu, also known as Bhakta Caprice or Bhakta Cap Rise because the cap stays on the rise. I just want to talk quickly about the caste system. First of all, the caste system, as it's represented in the modern world, is virtually non existent. The British wanted to destroy the caste system and for good reason because the people in India at that time were not practicing the caste system properly. First of all, Krishna speaks about the caste system as arranged, not according to birth. So in other words, if I'm born to a doctor, I'm not necessarily a doctor. I have to get proper qualification. The same thing applies to the caste system. In the age, this fallen age of Kali Yuga, we are all born as sudras, meaning working class people. Not slaves or, you know, this derogatory term, just working class people, regular middle class folks. That's sudra, that's the lowest level on the scale of the Varna, Varna Ashrama. And the next level up would be a Vaishya. They're, those people are merchants, uh, they own businesses. And they protect the cows. They are major cow herders and major cow protectors. Those are vaishas. Then you have Ksatriya or Satriya. These are rulers, administrators, presidents, politicians, kings, queens. And then you have Brahmana. Those are like the highly intelligent intellectual beings, the priest class. And you say, well, why is this guy talking about this Indian stuff that doesn't apply? But actually, in this material life we live, all of us fall into one of these categories. You're either a priestly or a highly intelligent thinking person, you're a warrior or a politician, or you're a merchant, business owner, or you're a regular working class, nine to five, just good hearted working person, that's all. The sudras are supposed to help all of the classes. They are not slaves to the other classes. Without a sudra, without a vaishya, then people like the brahmanas can't eat. You see, the brahmin... Although they're intellectual and powerful, they are not allowed to take a salary. When you put somebody in your pocket and you give them a salary, you can control what they teach. So a Brahmin can make money either by begging or receiving donations. Back in the days when the world was more prosperous, the kings automatically took care of the Brahmin class. We see this again and again in ancient Kemet. In ancient Egypt, the so-called pharaoh, because pharaoh is just big house. It doesn't represent Nsu Beti or the, the, the real ruler of the land. The, the ruler of the two lands, the north and south Kemet. Nsu Beti always upheld whatever the priests taught them or the Brahmins. Because the priests were the ones who understood the bandhus or the associations. What you call in voodoo in associations. In voodoo they call it um, correspondences. Just like sugar... Corresponds to sweetness, corresponds to Oshun. And salt has its own attribute. It's salty and it corresponds to a different Orisha or Netra. So when these priests understood the correspondences between the rains and the sun, the moon and the stars, they understood how Balaram taught them that when the dog star rises over the southern part of the Nile, then it's time to plant or get ready for the floods and vice versa. They understood bundles, associations. So this is why the Kings were so successful because they listened to the priests. The kings would take care of the priests. The priests would rule over the kings through knowledge, not through suppression. The king, in turn, your job is to make sure that the material needs and the spiritual needs of your kingdom is taken care of. Krishna says this is not by birth. This is by qualification. So you can be born today as a sudra, but your qualifications can make you a brahmana. Problem with Brahmanas is that they get caught up on their knowledge and their sense of accomplishments. Scientists, lawyers, doctors. I went to school and I studied acupuncture. I know Reiki. I know, uh, I know how to heal stuff. I know I'm a lawyer. I know how to get you out of trouble. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I could remove that cancerous toe from your left foot, Bob Marley. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> so they get caught up on, they believe that they should have some high position. I see this all the time. Even in the Hare Krishna movement, you got a lot of people who get caught up on their bodily conception and they think that something's rightful to them because they were either born in a certain country or born under a skin color. Man, ain't none of y'all. Krishna's no respect of no man. Krishna ain't got to respect none of that. Your only qualification 
Your only qualification is the level of service that you render unto the lowest servant of Krishna. If you're not serving Krishna's lowest servants, you are nobody in this movement and I ain't got to respect you. That's me talking straight to whoever think that they somebody special. You know how many times I meet people who tell me, I am born in a family of Brahmins. So what? I know Sudras that's doing more work than Brahmins in this movement right now. I know Vaishyas. I know warriors who's willing to fight to the death. But Brahmins like to sit on their own laurels and act like they special because they know how to take a string and a needle and put it through some flowers and adorn the deity with it. That's not enough. We in Kali Yuk, the caste system should be reinstated for the betterment of man. If we could get these stupid politicians to listen to us, the government would have never shut down. Because first of all, you would save so much money in the economy by closing down all of these stupid slaughterhouses. When you go to the supermarket and buy meat, you're buying sinful meat. At least, at least if you go to a voodoo ceremony in Santeria, at least they dedicate the meat to somebody. At least they slaughter it in somebody's name. You, McDonald's is slaughtering cows in nobody's name they doing it in the name of the luciferian dollar you understand so it's a lot of things that got to be rearranged oh we don't want to convert nobody Hare krishna we ain't here to convert nobody we want you to engage the holy names and listen to the words of the wise so that the world can be safe and prosper again it's a short video there's a lot more that i wanted to say and if needs be i'll put a part two if, if there's something you want me to speak about specifically I'll make a part two, but I just want to say, ancient Egypt was following a caste system. The Nubians were the Ksetrias. Why? Because they worshipped Narsimha Dev. Narsimha Dev. Simha means lion. They worshipped a Petamek. They had the bow and arrow. Who else had a bow and arrow? Ram. Ta Seti, land of the bow. When the Egyptians needed a Medje, they needed security. They would go to Nubia for security, man. Nubia was a Satria society. And then Egypt. Egypt, actually, when you go to the cities of ancient Kemet up and down the Nile, each city had a different deity. Ancient Egypt was not very different from modern day Hinduism. But once again, I'm a Vaishnav. I'm not a Hindu. Vaishnav, we surpass the Varna Ashram, the caste system. We approach the Lord as equals as relatives, as friends, or as lovers, or even in a neutral stance. You know you can go to the spiritual world and just be a rock and enjoy yourself as a rock or a waterfall for the Krishna's pleasure. Remember, everything is full and potent, and everything's original in the spiritual plane. It's unlimited. So even a rock in the spiritual plane is worth more than the entire manifested material universe. But that's another subject. Ancient Egypt was more Hindu than the Hindus are today. They followed their priests. And when the priests fell out of favor with their particular deity of that particular city, then the city and the kings would suffer. So people, know your history. Know your history. Know what's going on. Learn about these ancient civilizations. They are closer than you think. Any white man, any black man, any Indian man who wants to separate one member of the human race from the other, they are fallen souls. Do not follow them. We are all pure spirit soul and these bodily designations are the only thing that makes us think that we are superior or inferior to the next man. Hare Krishna.